Welcome back to the Weekly Recap. I'm Matt Wacker. Phelps County is boasting a newly completed modern jail facility at no cost to taxpayers. We spoke with Sheriff Rick Lazenby and Lieutenant Matt Schultz to find out how that was accomplished. We also take you inside the jail annex to compare the space before and after the remodel. Matt, it was just a little over two years ago I stood in the same spot showing viewers this old Phelps County Jail built in the early 70s and out of use since 2003. But now you would barely recognize this building. It's been completely remodeled and refitted for 2019. You know, it was built in 72, so it was an old original jail. Um, big keys, big, big locks, uh, everything was manual. Um, where we went in and out of the cells. Um, it's all been renovated to state of the art. So the, the doors have been converted to electric controls. Uh, there's a control center uh, where an officer will sit and monitor uh, through camera footage, monitor the doors and monitor the inmates. And um, everything is up to code and it's also up to uh, American jail standards. So it's a state of the art facility built in 72 and, and, and retrofitted or renovated uh, to, to meet the standards of today. The lights were dim, uh, it was hard to see, it was dark, uh, kind of a depressing um, place to be. So, you know, just even the, the paint and the lighting just bring on a whole new uh, look and feel to the building. Uh, and cameras as well, we had zero cameras here. There were no, there were no cameras where we could see uh, what was happening. There are several, um, cells and things that were added to the building that didn't exist prior to this renovation. Uh, this holding cell is one of them, and it's a, a handicap accessible holding cell. So we have a handicap accessible toilet and sink, a lower, a little bit lower bunk, and then a handicap accessible shower. As a, as a solitary confinement, you, you can call it, or isolation, um, but also just, just a wheelchair accessible handicap holding cell. This is the new control center. What you see is 355, mon 355 inch monitors on the, on the wall with all, I believe, 57 or 59 camera shots. Uh, an event monitor on the desk, so when an officer is, is working the, the control screen, when they touch on a specific area or a specific lock, uh, this event monitor will pop up that camera shot. And so they're able to see um, who is at or what's happening at the door that they're getting ready to open or close. There'll be a camera uh, angled at that, at that specific area. It's all bullet, bulletproof glass. Um, it's all secured, correction, high intense, um, state of the art, you know, up to date glass. Special uh, fire sprinkler heads, special lighting, um, all of those things had to be, you know, kind of unique as well as how to get the wiring in for the different things, you know, for the, for the intercoms and for the TVs and for the lighting. It has been uh, an intricate process, you know, and in 1972, uh, buildings were built um, a lot different than they are today. What does the new jail annex mean for Phelps County? Well, it, uh, it'll take a lot of the uh, overcrowding off for us. We've had a, uh, a large number of increase on the uh, state prisoners, plus we're holding federal inmates. And this will just give us a, a, an opportunity to expand, you know, to be able to continue on. Sooner or later, the, this facility was going to run out of room. And uh, this, by going in and renovating this, it created another 64 beds for us. It was designed with, uh, you know, the best security that we could possibly get for a building. And uh, we used a lot of federal guidelines to do that. For the county, it's it, it's a big thing. It's a win-win. First of all, the county doesn't have to somewhere down the line have to uh, to pay for that building for another building or in addition to this building because this here will uh, will take care of it. And again, there was no cost to the county, and there's no cost to the taxpayers. So there is no debt on this project. No, absolutely none. There's no there's no uh, tax dollars going into the uh, restoring of this building at all, wow. and all the equipment, uh, state of the art equipment that's inside there, the camera systems, the, do the new door locks, everything in there uh, is paid for. Uh, with no tax dollars from the county. This was all done by money seized through the asset forfeiture fund over a number of years. And we've just put this money away in hopes that someday we'd be able to, uh, to be able to provide this to the people of the county. You know, just people don't realize how big of a savings that is for them, you know. You know, we paid, 
you know, about $2.2 million to get this done. And, and whenever you can do that again without having to tap into the county and the county budget and general revenue, then, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. So money was saved over and above having built a new building, you're that, saying? That's correct. Eventually, we knew we were going to have to expand. This is just an overflow and gives us cushion, you know, for this facility. Mm -hmm. The National Antique Tractor Pull was held inside Lebanon's Cowan Civic Center this past weekend. They had competitors from all around the U.S. looking to take the number one spot in the championship. Carl Buckner, president of Missouri Pulling, and we put on this pull every year. National Antique Association, all sanctioned pull. They make the rules. And and uh, yesterday we had 461 pulls on two tracks. So we, we started at 8 in the morning and we got done last night at 7. Oh, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, uh, South Dakota, Missouri, Oklahoma, uh, Illinois, just all over the country. Oh, it'll be John Deere International who would be the most, but we have all, all the uh, major tractors. They can go up through a 1959 model. It has to be older than that. And uh, we've got a couple of Canadian tractors here, Cockshut that was made in Canada. Just everybody got their own brand that they like, and. So therefore, we get all different ones. We'll be back the 29th and 30th of March for the championship round, national championship. We'll pull on Friday and Saturday. How's it going with your New Year's fitness goals? We spoke with the folks at the center in Rolla to find out what's new in that organization and to get a little advice on keeping up with those pesky resolutions. The top three things that I would suggest to help you keep your New Year's resolution fitness goals would be to write them down because a lot of people have trouble visualizing their goals. They, don't, they set a goal out and they don't follow through because they have no clear visualization or concept of their goal. Um, the second thing that I would recommend to people would be to find somebody with the similar goals as you, like-minded, whether it be a workout partner or just somebody to hold you accountable. And the third thing I would recommend would be to write down your progress because this works as a, a big self-esteem boost and it just helps with the motivation and everything. It gets you really kicked in gear when you can see your physical progress, whether it be physical measurements or increased track time or anything like that. It just really helps with motivation. We have several new changes here at the center. We have a dedicated circuit room, a new cardio area. We've rearranged the fitness floor, including adding some plate-loaded fitness strength equipment uh, and to start everyone's January's off right with their New Year's resolutions we have a bunch of personal training specials and membership specials and we always have our monthly pass holder appreciation days because we are truly grateful for everyone's continued patronage. We want to thank our patrons for supporting us for over three million paid visits since we've been open and that includes people coming from 46 different states plus 12 European countries, China and Australia. Our core base obviously is Phelps County and we have a lot of folks that come here so that three million paid visits really is reflective of that diversity of membership. We've had 33 straight months of member growth and that includes all age groups so we're really thankful and appreciative of that. Have you heard this story about the Dora triplets? Making national headlines last week, the Missouri State High School Activities Association is currently investigating the Dora Boys basketball team for illegally swapping players during a tournament championship game against Licking. Referees didn't notice because three of the players on the Dora team, Austin, Mason, and Bryson Luna, are identical triplets. Josh Murray, the parent of a player on the Licking team, provided video evidence with parents from other schools making similar accusations throughout the season. Dora went on to win the game and the tournament. That's all for now. Thanks for watching the weekly recap. I'll see you next time.
Whether you live in Lebanon, Rolla, Salem, Thayer, or West Plains, now is probably the time of year when you're thinking and making positive financial goals for 2019. Better Business Bureau wants you to stay safe and be smart this new year. For some people who may have been victims of identity theft in the past, new goals going forward might be better on how to protect yourself and how to improve protecting yourself from identity theft. Now, statistics show approximately 7% of U.S. households fall victim to identity theft each year, and those numbers are on the rise. You can now choose to use a powerful tool, a credit freeze. Freezing your credit will not impact your credit score nor impair your ability to use your existing cards. A freeze locks down your credit reports used by lenders to determine how worthy your credit is, not your actual credit. Once you freeze your credit reports, opening a new line of credit will require some advanced planning. You'll need to request a temporary thaw with all three credit bureaus to allow lenders to access your reports. Now online, the thorough, that thaw request can take about 20 minutes for you to go ahead and get that selected. Now to be effective, you must freeze your credit at all three credit bureaus. You can do this by going to annualcreditreport.com. You can also do a fraud alert throughout the three credit bureaus. A fraud alert flags your credit reports. It alerts potential lenders to verify the identity of anyone attempting to open an account in your name. Fraud alerts are free and don't interfere with your ability to receive instant credit. However, fraud alerts rely entirely on the diligence of the person performing the credit check. Fraud alerts are also temporary and must be reinstated every 90 days in most cases. It's important to remember that while a credit freeze is very powerful protection and a credit alert, a fraud alert might be useful, neither is a guarantee. They will not prevent all forms of identity theft. To find out more, you can go ahead and regularly go to annualcreditreport.com, look at any unauthorized charges or other signs of fraud. You can also see more tips on your Better Business Bureau and how ways you can stay safe on bbb.org.